Thank you so much for being here, guys. Congratulations on another incredible entry in the, uh, in the Bond franchise, in the Bond world. It's amazing. Thank you. Uh, my first question right off the top is, this movie opens with just a phenomenal uh, one shot. Like, uh, the first shot of the film is so long, it's so beautiful, it's so well choreographed, I don't want to give too much away. But Daniel, what was it like shooting that? Talk, to, talk me through that. Was that uh, Oh, was for that me a... it was easy. I mean, really? Yeah. I, just, I just had to turn up. Um, <laughs> The, uh, You're going in and out of rooms, I imagine. Yeah, it's very yeah, yeah. well coordinated. That, that, I mean, the complicated stuff is actually filming it. Uh, we, we were doing something that was <laughs> very, it was massively ambitious. Um, you know, there's a tradition in Bond movies, you've got to open the movie with the, as big a bang as you can, and we, we wanted to go, with, go for it in this one. Um, and Sam always had this idea of doing a one shot, we, um, uh, which is technically very difficult. It's technically also difficult to sort of make work, and he's done a brilliant job of making it work. Um, but we had very, very experienced film crew on that set. I mean, most of the guys had just come off Star Wars. Some of them did the original Star Wars. Um, they're, 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 you know, they're incredibly experienced, and they were excited about what we were doing. And when you feel, when you feel that on a movie set, you know you're kind of you're heading in the right direction. Is that something that you look for going into another Bond movie? You look for something that's going to sort of set this movie apart from the last ones and is going to make Spectre possibly as iconic as moments in Skyfall? You don't, you don't consciously... I mean, look, you, you, you set out to make the best movie. I mean, Skyfall was one thing. It was in a particular direction. It was a very um, personal story. It's about M's death. It stays in the UK. And this one, you know, the ambition was we want to travel to as many places as we can get to. We want to expand it out. My character... Bond is, like, sort of behind the curve all the way through Skyfall. And in this film, he's ahead of the curve, and he's leading the chase. Uh, so it's you know, th th and so in that sense, you know, uh, you got three big set pieces with two smaller set pieces uh, attached to it, and then a, it's about making a good story. That's first and foremost the most important thing. Absolutely, Christoph. It's no secret that you are the villain in this. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I surprised you. Um, what what does it take to become a, a Bond a Bond villain? To be asked. <laughs> Ser seriously, um, I mean, this is this this is the the prerequisite. Um, um, it's it's in the script. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we all we all are connected through the script. That's how we work on the same thing. And uh, a villain is always there to create problems for the hero. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think playing this Bond villain is fabulous because I like to create problems. Can I ask you a question about your villain? Uh, I noticed that he doesn't wear socks in the film. It's a silly observation, but it was one, there were two very specific shots where there were no socks. Have you ever worn socks in the desert when it's, <laughs> it's kind of hot? Fair enough. Was that a, but I, it, it seemed like a very clear decision, and it was kind of, uh, it, it, in the shots, you could see it very clearly, and I was wondering whose idea that was, if that was a thought that went into the villain, or if it was just about the practicality of someone in the desert. It was about 105 degrees, so, you know. <laughs> uh, Monica, uh, you're absolutely beautiful in the film. It's a, it's a great part, and I feel like you're, you're a Bond girl who hasn't been a Bond girl yet. You should have been a Bond girl a while ago. We've been waiting for this for a long time. What was it like to finally get the ask? But before I was too young for the role. <laughs> so, uh, but actually for me it's a really great experience to have the chance to work uh, with this amazing cast and uh, directed by Sam Mendes and to play this part uh, is not very long in the movie but it's a key role and uh, for the first time, an adult woman, a mature woman, and I think it's a beautiful example for women, for actresses. Anyway, for me, it was great. <laughs> and um, I had those moments of uh, uh, passion and fight with Daniel, and it was easy because he's very sexy, so. <laughs> Does that make you blush, Daniel? No. <laughs> I have no complaints, though. <laughs> Uh, Leah, you come from, you're, you know, you're coming off of Blue is the Warmest Color and a, a lot of films before that in, in France. What's it like to become an international star, not just on the art house circuit, but now uh, just on the international circuit in terms of a franchise like Bond? Yeah, um, they had imagination <laughs> because <laughs> I come from um, 
I mean, a very new, uh, another kind of films, I would say. Um, no, but I was very, I mean, very happy to be part of the, the film, you know. Uh, it's so iconic and, you know, it's also working with great actors, a great director, you know, it's not only an action film. So, I mean, it's, for me, it's a dream. Were you nervous taking on such a large role in such a well-known uh, movie franchise? Yeah, I was kind of nervous, I have to say. And also working with, I was impressed by Daniel. <laughs> And, uh, Daniel, you know, not anymore, <laughs> I should add. <laughs> that, that, not anymore. That, that was a couple of days, and that was gone. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, you know, um, to be on this on a set that huge, and so. But it was, um, I mean, it was a great experience. Daniel, when you sign on for uh, a fourth Bond movie, how involved are you in pre-production in the story, or are you sort of signing on as Bond the actor and you trust everybody else beforehand? Do you feel any ownership of this character? I don't character? trust anybody. <laughs> um, um, I, when I, when I uh, did this, came, did Casino Royale, which is 10 years ago now, um, <clears throat> I asked the producer who was here at Barbara whether or not, if, I, if I'm gonna do this, then I need to be part of the whole process. I need to know what's going on, and I need to have my say. Um, even if you don't listen, um, and I've got a very big mouth, so I, 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 you know, the creative process is the most important part of filmmaking for me, and I want to be part of that process, and they very generously let me do that. So I've done that in all four movies, um, and Sam as well, when he came on board, very, very generously allowed me into that process. So I've been, you know, this has been a two-year, uh, two-and-a-half-year process for me, I'll say process again. Is it different when a director like Sam Mendes comes on to the project? Does he add something? I mean, every director would add something different, but Sam Mendes comes from, I think, a, a different kind of pedigree uh, at times. Does he bring something different? No, the whole, the whole deal is, I mean, the, the cast we have is like, I, 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 I wouldn't matter what movie I was in, I would be, this is my dream cast. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I've always said, if we have this amount of money to spend on a film, then we should get the best people for the job. And you've got to, you know, you've, you've got to attract them. But Sam, which does something he does incredibly well, is he casts beautifully, and um, actors want to work with him because he's. And I hate to use the term because I don't know exactly what it means, but he's a great actor's director. Um, and, and and I think everybody here will say, you know, that working with Sam is just, it's just he has your back. He looks after you. He makes you give a better performance. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a. Uh, I've been, like I said, I've got a big mouth. I get involved. <laughs> Christoph, uh, you know, you're, you're known very well for your, your roles in Tarantino's movies, who's also considered an actor's director in many ways. How is Sam an actor's director, specifically on a, on a, on a Bond movie, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's much different than, than, than a Tarantino role for an actor? Yeah, I, I mean, comparing Tarantino and Sam Mendes is somewhat of a futile endeavor. Um, um, Sam, Sam is a theater animal. He's a showman, and um, that's common ground. So is Daniel, by the way. And um, you, you can feel that in, in the work in, with, with, between director and actors. Um, there's a different mode amongst uh, theater people. Do you feel like it's important to have a theater background for, for roles like this or for projects like this? No, but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> Uh, Monica, when you signed on to the film, did you know what part you were going to be playing? Was there a script ready to go? Or were you signed on as Monica Bellucci and we'll find a role for you in, in, in this movie? No, no, no. Actually, um, when I met Sam Mendes in London, he explained to me that he was looking for um, a mature woman. And, uh, because actually I was surprised. I said, what am I going to do at 50 years old in a James Bond? But he said, for the first time I want... Uh, That's absurd. You're absolutely beautiful at 50 years old. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, he said, for the first time, I want an adult woman uh, close to Bond. And I say, thank you very much. And, um, and actually, even though he's, a, he's not a long part in the movie, but he's a key role. And, uh, and I had to express so many things in not a long amount of time. And um, so I did it because I had those four strong scenes and I wanted to do it. Leah, this is your first time uh, really doing action sequences, right? Action scenes? No, I did some before. You've done action scenes before? Yeah. So what was this, was this different for you in, in the Bond world? Were they, were they bigger than before, or are you, are you used to it? 
No, I'm not. Uh, no, <laughs> not this kind of action. <laughs> No, no, but um, no, it was great to do some action in the film. I mean, it's part of the, you know, it's part of James Bond's world. So it was, I really loved it, really. Yeah, and I had to do my own stunt as well. You did your own stunts? Yeah, yeah, I jumped from eight meters. I was with the... Uh, <laughs> did you get a little banged Daniel. up? Daniel. <laughs> yeah, Daniel, how close do you get to, to doing your own stunts? Do you do a fair amount of them? Or at this point, do you kind of need to remain unbruised for the other shots? I wish that would so. Um, I don't definitely get bruised, but that's kind of part of the job. I've been doing that since since Casino, and I, I enjoy it. I get a kick out of it. I mean, I'm not I'm not as stupid as I was because I don't bounce as much as I used to. But um, um, I, so I, you know, if, if there's a re very skillful stunt man who can do make me look very good, I'm I'm all for it. You know? But I just I try and get my face in there. I try. I want the audience to try and believe that I'm there, that I'm doing it. With this, uh, with this entry into the uh, Bond franchise, like I said, there are a there's action sequences in every one of these movies, but I feel like the opening action sequence in this film is just something we've never seen before, akin maybe to the, the train sequence in, in, in Skyfall. Uh, how, much you, how much of that was talked about beforehand and planned and was decided that this is good? No, we just turned up and shot it. So that scene was improvised? To all of it was totally improvised. Do you totally guys like improvised. improvising on set? There's a massive amount of planning. It's... it's, it's, uh, it's you know, that's why I say I'm a, I'm a very small part of that process. I mean, literally, I turn up and I, obviously I've been rehearsing and I've been working out and I know what the shot is. But I, you know, I'm fitting into a, you know, in, into a, into a, in, into a sort of a, a process which has been going on for months and months and months of planning and just the logistics of it. We had thousands of extras. Um, we had helicopters flying 30 feet above the ground. We had them looping the loop. You know. We, I'm there for a week, I, I shoot solidly for a week, and then the, the second unit carries on shooting for another month, you know, after that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very complicated thing. And I mean, I'm, I'm massively proud of it, but I'm massively proud of it because I, I know everybody involved in the amount of work that went into to, to getting it to, to where it is. Do you feel like, a, does, does the Bond world feel kind of like a family for you at this point, having done four movies? Just like a family, yes. But like a thousand-person family. Oh, yeah, all that goes along with it. Yeah, <laughs> you love them and you hate them. Uh, I think I think it's silly to say like, have you always wanted to play a Bond villain or always wanted to play James Bond? I can't imagine a young actor at twenty being like, I'm going to be a James Bond villain. But did you ever think that you would become that? Was that ever something that was on your bucket list? Only when I was very very small, and then I grew out of it, and I wanted to be James Bond, and then. <laughs> Did that jealousy of James Bond help you help fuel your character? Absolutely. <laughs> you have to draw from yourself, you know. Daniel, is it? Do you ever want to uh, play the villain? I mean, you can't play a Bond villain at this point. I do, but I think. Yeah. You think um, you do play a villain? Um, yeah, obviously. I mean, as, as Christoph often says, you know, the villains are, are often the most interesting characters because they're they're very very complicated. Um, and that's, uh, you know, they're always attractive. Um, but I mean, I, I, I've never played Bond as a good guy. Yeah, I feel like your Bond has always been, and I'm not sure if it's something that you, you brought to the table, but a much more complicated Bond, one who was sort of struggling with his role as a hired gun and a, a, as, a, a, as a spy. Well, he kills people for a living, you know? I mean, it's, it's, that's, a, that's a pretty heavy thing. I mean, it's like, and I, I just, I don't know how else to do it. I think that you know you've got to approach a character. You've always got to never forget it's James Bond. It's a James Bond movie, and there are certain rules that apply. But everything else is uh, is up for grabs. Are you always surprised by what new special skill Bond has in in, a, in an upcoming movie? There's always a new one. I feel like. What is it in this one? Well, I guess he's he helicopter. You know, he fights someone in a helicopter and yeah. kicks them out and elbows them. And I don't want to give too much away, but there's a pretty strong helicopter fight. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't give anything away with that, did you? <laughs> um, yeah, I look, he's James Bond. Yeah. That's it. That's all we got. <laughs> yeah, he does a bunch of shit. He's James Bond. He's always doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leah, when working with Daniel Craig, were you nervous working with him? How did he make you feel comfortable on set? You said you were a bit nervous taking on this role. <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, we got along very well. I think so. Fart I gags. <laughs> what? <No. laughs> Mainly fart gags. Yeah. Fart gags? Uh, 
Is that how you make a serious scene funny for you, Offset? Is the, do you actually do fart gags? You do whatever you want. You do whatever you can. I mean, the fact of it is, it's it, it, you know, we're doing very long days. I'm not complaining. We do very long days, and you know, it's you know, you've been on a movie set. It's 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 kind of intense and often very boring. Mm-hmm. We just have a laugh. We kind of try and keep ourselves jollied along. Like you're at work. When you're at work, you try and keep everybody keep everybody going. That's the, that's the, that's the deal. Did Daniel do fart gags with you and with you? I would do it with everybody. <laughs> Daniel Craig, addicted to fart gags. That's how he makes it work on set. It's really like, like, <laughs> Guys, they're farts. They're funny. Come on. We obviously don't think so. That's <laughs> <laughs> a serious crowd here. Uh, Monica, you, as you said, you have, you have a short but pivotal role um, in, in the film. Was a lot more shot of your character, or was that, that, that pretty much it going into it? But for me... Um, Do you wish you had some never, action sequences? Is no, mm, there are so many ways to do action, you know? She started in the cemetery and she finished in the bed. This is the action. <laughs> but, um, but actually, you know, the, um, I wanted to work in this movie because for me, it's in the process of uh, my career. I've done always films, small movies, like uh, Malena, an Italian movie, and then a uh, film like Matrix and uh, Irreversible, and then uh, you know, other big movies. And this is the process, you know, the, wor- the working process I like. And also, I'm European, I'm not part of the American system, and, uh, and all the American movies I've done, I've done through Europe. And so, for me, it's interesting to move between one European movie, an American movie, an English movie. Right now, I'm shooting a Serbian movie oh, wow. with the Mercosurica. So it's, um, you know, a kind of uh, interesting way to work, and also because to work with directors that come from different cultures, it becomes an interesting way to uh, to learn things, not just as an actress, but also as a person. I think it's amazing that you brought up Irreversible. It's just an amazing, amazing accomplishment and, and, and movie. Um, Christoph, do you have a favorite Bond villain? Did you have one going into this movie? Was there anyone that you looked... <laughs> I'll, um, I'll rephrase. <laughs> With the exception of you, do you have a favorite Bond villain? Um, no, but when, whenever I'm being asked, um, Gerd Fröbe in Goldfinger comes to mind. And um, I grew up with these movies where Gerd Fröbe played these characters. And in, to see him in a different context with James Bond um, is always, um, in a way, I don't know whether I could call it uh, sentimental, but uh, let's, let's call it inspiring, because he, he was a German theater actor propelled into this, uh, into this uh, situation. And um, maybe, maybe I think of him because I identify not with the, um, you know, so huffing and puffing and uh, what he's doing, but, you know, the situation um, maybe... There are similarities. I don't know. Can you talk about who your villain is, who your character is in relation to to Bond? Absolutely not. (laughs) Go and see the movie. (laughs) There was a lot of annoying uh, internet rumors beforehand, and I feel like uh, it's 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 been settled now. But maybe we'll we'll hold off and let people see the movie. Is that the is that the deal? Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent. I'm on, I'm on your side here. <laughs> uh, Daniel, did you have any favorite Bonds going in when you first started? Was there anyone that you looked to as like, that's, that's the Bond that I think I should emulate or try to be or at least I never think did. of as an I inspiration? I never did that, no, because I'm, I'm a terrible mimic, so I, I, I wouldn't have been very good at doing, doing that. But, you know, Sean Connery is... He defined it. He, I think it's one of the reasons it's still as popular as it is today. Um, and those, those early movies are... They stand up. They still stand up. If this were to be uh, your your last Bond, what would you want? What would you want to leave people with in terms of you as as Bond or your Bond legacy? Um, Fart gag? Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, leave it there. There's one That's in the movie. I don't, wanna, I don't want to ruin it, but there is. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, well, how would, if I, if I wanted to, if I wanted, uh, what's the question? <laughs> 
Uh, if this were to be your last Bond movie, what would you want to be your lasting Bond legacy? How people thought of Daniel Craig as Bond? I, look, I've always, you know, the thing is, I, I, all we've ever tried to do with these films is just make the best movies we can. And, it, you know, if you'd asked me 10 years ago where I wanted Bond movies to be now, I would have said right here. And that's, so I, I, so I'm, I'm, I feel very incredibly satisfied and I'm, I'm, I'm just honored to be part of them. And it's, it's been, I have an, a, you know, a, a, a wonderful, wonderful time shooting these movies. Um, they're like nothing else. Um, and, uh, you know, so if it were to be my last movie, I'd be very happy. And if it's not, I'll still be happy. Absolutely. I think we have some time for audience questions. Does anyone have a question out here in the audience? Hey. As a young actress, um, the audition process could be very stressful. Uh, would you have audition advice uh, for someone like me? And when you do get the role, how do you stay focused in such a stressful environment? Uh, maybe I can answer that question, this question. Um, yeah, I was very nervous when I did the casting, so I had a beer. <laughs> and uh, I don't think it was a great idea. <laughs> So, uh, no, just uh, stay with your fears and, I mean, try to be focused. That's all I can say. And it, but a beer can, you know, <laughs> help also because I was obviously... You got the part. I got the part, so maybe. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's very, but, you know, it's part of the, I mean, it's a job. It's a difficult job, I think, and um, we all have fears, and but we have to to, I mean, live with them. Monica, did you, you, you didn't have to uh, audition for, for your part, did you? No, because um, actually uh, some... I Script don't... said Monica, Monica Bellucci. Bellucci. <laughs> so, uh, and here she was, so it's fine. There was no audition it's, involved. Yeah, so was already... They was looking for an Italian widow with secrets, so, you know, <laughs> there are not Monica so Bellucci. many. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Christoph, you were said you were just asked. No, no, I was asked to audition, and then oh. I was called back, and then they wanted someone else, and then I pleaded them, and um, <laughs> in the end, I said I'll do it for free, and then they said okay. <laughs> the next question from the audience. Hey guys, just want to say I'm a big fan. Can't wait to see the movie. Uh, this one's for Daniel. If this is going to be your last Bond film, who would you like to see replace you? Um, I, I, you've probably heard this from me in the press a number of times. It's not that I don't care, but I, I just, I, I, it's whoever is, I just be good, just get it right. I mean, it's like, uh, um, you know, they're, they're an amazing thing to be part of. And I, I genuinely haven't given this any thought at the moment. I, I don't know whether this is my last movie. I want time off. I want to think about other things than James Bond. But whoever does it in the future, because someone will, you know, I hope they make it. You know, they make them good. How much time have you usually gotten off in between, in between movies to think about other projects or even do other projects? This one was a little different. I did a play in, in New York two years ago, but that was it. Then I decided to not do anything. I wanted to concentrate on this. Hmm. Next question. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, why do you think that the Bond legacy uh, has lasted so long? Why is it still popular? even though there's been 24 movies? Because they kick ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I'll try. I mean, I, people ask that a lot, and I don't know really what the answer is, because if we knew what the formula was, we'd just keep doing it. Um, I don't think, in fact, it's kind of the opposite. You, it, there's, a kind of, there's a saying, if it, if, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we don't do that with the, the movies. We rethink them. We try, and, we try and think up as, fr as fresh an idea as we possibly can. And traditionally, over the years, they've always changed. They've always kind of reflected a little bit what's going on in the world. And they've been event cinema. And they've been a celebration of cinema. And, and we've continued to try and do that. Um, you know, it's a very crowded marketplace now. Uh, 50, we had 62 whenever the first movie came out. There was one action adventure movie, and this was it. And now there's 10, 20 movies a year. And you know you're trying to you know you're trying to remain at the top of that pile, um, and that's that, so you just you, you've got to. I always say you put the creatives in the room, and and, and you'll figure it out. But it's uh, it, it's it, you know it's a, it's a it's a tall order. 
Also, look at that poster. Come on. Of course it's still popular. That's awesome. Next question. Uh, we're going to take one last question from an online viewer. Madison would like to know, what is the funniest thing that happened behind the scenes while filming? Christoph. <laughs> Thank you. That was the answer, by the way. <laughs> not, not I can far. answer. You can answer? <laughs> when we, we were uh, with Daniel in the desert, you remember? Which and the pants ripped off. Oh, yeah. Daniel's pants. <laughs> Only once has it ever happened. <laughs> yeah, my pants funny. tore in two. Your pants, they just tore in two? Yeah, I, what was I doing? I was lunging. They <laughs> <laughs> found it very funny. I really want a Spectre blooper reel with the pants being torn and all of your fart gags. Like, that's, that's really what I, at the end of the credits, DVD we extras, that? don't we? Thank you so much. Um, guys, I have to let you go. Congratulations on another uh, classic entry into the Bond movie world. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Spectre comes out on Friday, guys. Go see it.